Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sarah Peternell. I'm the owner of Family Nutrition Services in Denver, Colorado, and I'm the creator of an online 30-day program for people who have Hashimoto's called Nourished and Renewed with Hashimoto's. Today, I'm going to be talking about a nutrition subject that is helpful for anyone. Uh, winter time is coming and people usually get into a rut with some of their eating because we tend to think of the fresh produce associated with spring and summer as being gone at this point in the year. And so we actually forget about some of the fresh and available seasonal fruits and vegetables that are still available and that are very, very good for our health. So I'm going to share with you some of my top winter superfoods that you can find available in most of your grocery stores, including your health food stores, and that are readily available, abundant, and very, very nutritious this time of year. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you some ingredients to make a really good superfood winter soup that you can make um, right at your own home. So the first uh, superfood that I want to share some information with you about is the pomegranate. So you've probably seen the commercials on TV for the pomegranate juice. And of course, now it's pretty commonly associated with pomegranates are very, very high in antioxidant compounds. Even a very, very small amount of, of pomegranate seeds or juice contain a very high, what we call an ORAC score, or the antioxidant level score, making pomegranates a really good bang for your buck. And they also can taste really good. Now they have a very, very sour, um, kind of sweet, um, almost like a sweet, sour, pungent kind of a flavor. So one of the things I love to do with pomegranate juice is to dilute it with a little bit of sparkling water, maybe a squeeze of lime or lemon, and sometimes I even add a little splash of kombucha on top just to make kind of a winter-friendly mocktail, meaning that it doesn't have any alcohol in it, but it's still very festive and very pretty, has a bright red color, and you can enjoy this all winter long, and it's also great for kids to drink as well if you do juice in your household to give them a special winter juice that is especially high in the antioxidants that are known for scavenging free radicals and helping to protect against any cellular damage. So the next one on my list are cranberries and they are very similar in terms of the properties uh, to the pomegranate. Um, they're particularly known for some of their anti-inflammatory compounds. Now we think a lot about uh, cranberries with a lot of our fall and winter foods and side dishes, especially during the holidays perhaps. Cranberries can be consumed in a variety of different ways. Um, they're easy to cook. You can just cook them over the stove with a little bit of um, maybe fresh lemon juice and a little pinch of coconut sugar and a pinch of cinnamon to make a really easy coconut, or excuse me, coconut, um, cranberry spread. And what I was going to say is that sometimes I even add a little bit of shredded coconut or chopped walnuts to make kind of a little cranberry relish as a side dish. You can also roast these in the oven. I know that sounds kind of unusual, but you can, sometimes I like to make like a savory cranberry uh, roast. And so what I'll do is I'll just take cranberries and some yellow onion and some bone broth and some olive oil and some fresh herbs like rosemary. And I will cook those in the oven on 400 degrees and they just kind of come out a um, little bit golden and caramelized and that savory flavor is really delicious with some um, pasture raised, say, uh, um, poultry or maybe even having this with a um, grass fed, um, maybe beef roast or something like that. It just adds a really nice complimentary flavor. So cranberries are known for something that um, we call by short PACs. And PACs are this compound within the cranberries that kind of protect our cells against bacteria and viruses from adhering. So that means that they kind of provide like a, a coating or a protective um, barrier so that viruses and bacteria can't attach themselves to our cells. So they really make a great immune system food for this time of year. All right, next is cabbage. 
we don't often think of cabbage as being a superfood because it is so inexpensive. Um, and traditionally, you know, cabbages have been a part of a lot of the wintertime foods and recipes that are maybe, you know, traditional among maybe your grandparents or past generations because it was inexpensive and it was readily available. I know my own grandpa, he used to shred cabbage and make our own, you know, sauerkraut and some other fermented um, concoctions. He did a lot of different types of things down in his um, his little like basement kitchen area where he had a lot of canned goods and not all of them turned out great to be honest with you but e it is so easy to make your own um, sauerkraut at home and there are recipes all over the internet basically you just need shredded cabbage water um, and salt and sometimes people add a little bit of vinegar as well but what I like to do is just to eat cabbage raw. That's where you get the most health benefits. Um, there is um, a property within the antioxidants of cabbages called glucosinolates, and these are known for their anti-cancer properties. So they are very, again, powerful antioxidant. Cabbage um, offers a lot of benefits in terms of protecting cells against the free radical damage and or tumor producing factors. You know, we want to obviously keep our cells very healthy. We don't want um, any cancer cells to grow in our body, but cabbage is also a very, very high source of vitamin C, which is also very beneficial to the immune system. And it's a great source of folate, which is uh, vitamin B9, really supportive of the detox pathways in the body. And also it's a great source of fiber. So I love to just shred a little bit of cabbage, add it to salads. I even will sprinkle it on, sprinkle it on soups or stews or chili. Um, and honestly, there's so many different uses for cabbage. You can saute it with some olive oil. Um, you can, and I like to saute it with olive oil, sea salt, and fennel seeds. That's really delicious. Or you can roast it in the oven um, along with some other maybe root vegetables just to give it a little bit of crunch. Next is another um, favorite vegetable that's in the same family as cabbage and it's Brussels sprouts and if you haven't already watched my video that I did a while ago about a great family friendly um, Brussels sprout recipe for detox um, you can watch that one next so you can learn how to do some quick stir-fried delicious um, Brussels sprouts um, the next time you pick them up at the store. These are also um, a great source of some of the same antioxidant properties that I was talking about with cabbage and because we know that they are a great detox support they're really helpful for keeping the body nice and clean um, and making sure that all of our cells and tissues and organs and our bloodstream just stays nice and um, protected during the winter months especially. Okay one of my next favorite superfoods is pistachios. Now obviously nuts and seeds have a lot of superfood benefits but pistachios in particular are rich in an antioxidant and a nutrient called lutein which is very special for your eyesight. So in the winter months when it's colder, darker, and the days are shorter, especially if you're spending a lot of time on screens, having um, the antioxidant nutrient lutein which is spelled L-U-T-E-I-N is really great just to protect your eyes and um, just to kind of keep, you know, your um, all of your vision and everything all through the winter months nice and protected. And then also pistachios are a great source of protein. So for vegans and vegetarians who do consume nuts and seeds, this is just a great way to get more protein into your diet. And also because of their protein content and their fiber content, they're a great snack if you have a weight loss goal this winter because just a little bit goes a long way to make you satiated and to feel full and to really kind of satisfy maybe your desire for something salty and crunchy. Um, next are two superfoods that are going to be in my recipe that I'm going to share with you in just a second. But winter squash, something like a butternut squash I have here, is a great source of vitamin A, the carotenoids that are found in a winter squash are um, some of the precursors for the preformed um, ret, uh, vitamin A that is in our bodies that help to support um, immune system function. And so um, it's a great idea to consume a little bit of winter squash several, several times per week. It's also a great source of vitamin C for the immune system. And also surprisingly, 
Butternut squash and its other squash cousins are great sources of omega-3 fatty acids from a plant-based source. I know we don't often think of squash as being a healthy plant-based fat, but it does contain omega-3s. And next is a spice called turmeric root. Um, I've done some other videos all about turmeric. Uh, you can check those out. But this is for sure a winter superfood. Um, it is loaded with um, the anti-inflammatory property curcumin, which you can take in a supplement form. You can also get the raw root form of turmeric root. Today I just have the organic spice here that's ground. And to incorporate um, these two especially delicious and very nutritious superfoods into a very easy recipe that you can do at home. Basically it is a butternut squash soup recipe and the ingredients are one medium size, this one's actually a little bit on the big size, big side, um, one butternut squash, two uh, winter apples, these happen to be um, honey crisp and um, they're about a medium size, that, that's enough um, for that. One yellow onion, um, some garlic, I'll probably use four or five cloves because I really like it a lot, salt and pepper, and then about a teaspoon of turmeric. So what you do is you peel and seed and cube your butternut squash, you're gonna chop your apples, you can leave the skin on, and you're gonna dice your onion, you're gonna mince your garlic, Okay, this is more of a method, it's not real scientific. And you're gonna put all of those ingredients when they're prepared in your baking dish and put them in the oven at about 425 degrees um, and roast those um, vegetables and apples. And then in the end, towards the end of cooking, when they start to get a little bit caramelized, that's when I add in my teaspoon of turmeric and some sea salt. And I use, um, for my oil, I use olive oil so that it gets um, some nice healthy fats. And then I'll take them out of the oven and then I'll blend them in the Vitamix with one can of organic coconut milk and one container of organic chicken bone broth. And so after they're all pureed together, then I add them back into my soup pot and I have a delicious butternut squash um, superfood soup that the whole family will love. So please um, check out some of my other videos where I have recipes that are great, especially one-pot dishes that are really yummy for the whole family, very easy to make. And thank you so much for watching my video today. Remember to like, subscribe, and share, and I'll be back more with more. See you soon. Bye.